Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we are talking all about if I had to start from scratch, if I was do it all again, how would I do it? Now, I know you're probably in business for a while, but this is still an awesome episode because I know you have things to add to this, but stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com. And you are here. What's up? Thanks for hanging out with us. Hopefully, uh, if it's your first time here, you have a look around and you like what you see. You might want to hang out and watch a few more episodes. We are coming up on episode number 200. What? 200 episodes? It's crazy. Each episode being at least 30 minutes long. And uh, it's been going on for 200 straight weeks without fail. I've not missed one. I've had Corona. Virus. I've been on a cruise. I've been on uh, vacations. I've not missed one yet. So, there you go. Claim to fame. But if you are one of the cool kids, like the sticker says, uh, that means that you watch every episode. You comment on YouTube. Thumbs up talking to you, Mr. Fuster. Um, And more importantly, you order your supplies through me. Shameless plug time. Well, it is because of you that I get to have fancy shirts purchased from an outlet store so thank you thank you thank you thank you very much but uh, truly guys if you do want to order anything through me i would be much obliged Uh, that's how i make my cheddar Uh, all you need to do is give me a call or shoot me a text even better 862-312-2026 i am telling you there are hundreds and hundreds of you who order directly through me always through me always put orders in through me and it absolutely means the world so Even if some of you aren't watching anymore, letting me put those orders in, it's amazing, man. Thank you. Um, But there is one more tier above a cool kid, and that is an epic cool kid. You do all that. You put your orders in through me, shameless plug time, and you subscribe to American Window Cleaner Magazine. Well, what's up? We finally got the post office thing uh, figured out for the most part, but if you want to see a sneak peek of the next issues... Uh, stickers, here it is. It's upside down. There you go. Look at Gary Maurer. We got Gary Maurer on there. Uh, Anyway, this is a sticker sheet. This comes in every single issue of the magazine. It changes every month. So when you see all these guys with awesome stickers like this, that's why. It's because they have American Window Cleaner Magazine. Just go to awcmag.com. Yeah, anyway, shameless plug time done. What's up? I'm glad that you're hanging out with us, and I'm glad you're watching because... I don't like to do what I would consider like new person only shows. And the reason is, is because there's a lot of you who are not new. You're not, this is not your first time, uh, you know, cleaning windows. This isn't your first season. A lot of you watch or listen and you've been uh, doing this for a really long time, which is super, super awesome. But I thought it was a really interesting um, uh suggestion if you will and i got it from a viewer and they wanted to know what i would do if i was to do it all over again like if i was creating it from scratch what would i do and i thought man this is a really cool idea because so many things would change so if you're not new tell me down below on youtube what would you do different tell me the top three things that you would do different. Heck, tell me the number one thing you would do different. But comment down below on YouTube. If you're not on YouTube and you're listening to this in the podcast world, awesome. There's like 10 times more people that listen than watch. But just go to YouTube, search WCR Nation with this episode number or whatever, uh, or scratch WCR Nation and the word scratch and you should pull up. But anyway, comment down below on YouTube. But I got to thinking... And hindsight being 2020, I actually started uh, a business a second time, and there were things I did way different. And I wanted to kind of go over some of those things. Now, if you are already in business, it's still interesting to kind of think about this, right? Because when I was new in business, I was on a shoestring budget, and I didn't know how advertising really worked. I didn't know how any of that really worked. So when I did ads, it was just like, put all my money that I could scrape up into something, hand out flyers, uh, get black and white copies, do all these things. And it's like, it didn't really work as well as it could have. Now, 
my business was extremely successful in my eyes, so I was happy with the outcome, if you will. But I'm gonna move this. Hold on, I'm sorry. It's it's bouncy. There we go. It was bothering me that this was uh, on on not lining up. Anyway, um, but uh, uh, I could have been bigger and badder faster if I had done things with hindsight. The kind of cool thing that happens now is that a lot of us or a lot of you especially if you are newer in business, you get to learn from some of the guys that are out there. Now, don't listen to everything because every area is a little bit different, of course. But a big thing is you get to learn from others' mistakes. Now, when I started window cleaning, there was like Gary Maurer's forum. Actually, the OG himself, Mr. Maurer. He was the first one ever to have a forum before forums were a thing, really. Uh, It was an email thing. So you'd ask a question. It would email everybody on the list. Somebody would reply, which would email everybody on the list. And it was just like tons of emails you had to go through and try. It was very, very hard, but it was the only way to learn anything. And nothing was really archived. So when you jumped in, all the things that they were talking about before that was gone. The nice thing, there wasn't really trolls because you go through all that effort to be a troll. But anyway, um, so there was a lot of trial and error. So there's a lot of things you find out by doing something and go, man, that didn't work. I'm going to tell you one of my biggest kind of flops if you will, was actually uh, I decided that I was going to do a mall kiosk. I was going to do gift certificates, right? Man, that's an awesome idea. Everybody's at the mall, back when malls were a thing, um, and uh, everybody's at the mall because they don't know what to get people, and I thought, man, this is going to be awesome. They can get gift certificates. It's going to be this, ah, oh, it's going to be, man, I got all this stuff, and I got all these, bro- it's, I'm going to be overwhelmed, but I can handle it. We got some of my staff, we were switching it out. Everybody was there all day running the... And uh, it became apparent real quick. In the first two weeks when I had not sold one thing, not one person was interested, it wasn't understood really by people I, that I made a big mistake. Now, at the time, this was around Christmas time, so it's going into winter. This is me being in Wisconsin. It wasn't in people's brains. They didn't really want to give a gift that they couldn't use for a while. Um, but with all that being said... I realized I had to be the one doing all the work. So now all of a sudden I'm there all the time, every day. I was there for 20 hours, I think, on Black Friday, so long the mall was open. It's just, ugh. And I spent thousands and thousands of dollars going into winter when I didn't have thousands and thousands of dollars to do. In hindsight, I still think it's a great idea, but something went wrong in the execution. I would not do it again. But anyway, if you've had that kind of success, tell me what I did wrong. But stuff like that. If I would have known, I wouldn't have done it. It's like billboards. Billboards do not sell window cleaning. It's very, very hard. Billboards just don't work very well. Radio is the same thing. It's very expensive for um, uh, window cleaning. And um, some people said they had success. I never tried it. It just wasn't something that I know people really had success with. Learn by others' errors, right? But there's some things that I would definitely change. Now, the first and foremost thing that I would change... If I was starting from scratch in general, or if I started another location or whatever, is I would instantly buy good equipment. Now, you're thinking to yourself, well, of course that's what he says because he's a salesman. That's right. I am a salesman for windowcleaner.com, and I would love to be your rep, your guy. I want to put your orders in. I want to be that guy. But on everything being uh, separate, even if I wasn't a rep, I would 100,000% want to have good equipment, the best I could possibly afford. And the reason is, when you're getting into business, you assume tools and things. Oh, man, I can get away with this one. Ah, man, this one's like $5 as compared to $20. That'll save me. But the thing is that you don't realize is that you are buying tools to make you money. You're not buying like a TV. A TV will never make you money. Buying McDonald's on a credit card will never make you money, right? So in your brain, you're like, oh, man, I want this new pocket knife, but this one's half the price of the other one. I'll go with that one. That's not making you money. It's just something you want. When you have tools, it's a whole nother game. Now, look at like an electrician. You buy an electrician's pair of like Klein, Klein, whatever they are, Klein, I think, uh, pliers, and they're like $80 for one pair of pliers. But every electrician that's been an electrician for a long time has those. Why? Because it makes 
sense. Using better tools always makes sense. It always is going to be a better option for you. But in the beginning, we do a lot of double buying, meaning you buy something and like six months later, you're like, this is garbage. You got to buy better. And then you still don't get the best. You get a better one. Man, you know what? I really would have liked that. And then all of a sudden you start getting a couple more bucks and you're like, I'm going to buy it. So all of a sudden it's like two, three, four times you're rebuying stuff. And it's like, that didn't save you any money. All it did was give you, you know, two years of not having the right tool. You buy a good tool up front, it's going to last you for like ever. A zero peer system. People always talk about that and they want to try to build their own and that's cool. Do your thing. Like I'm nobody. Don't listen to me. Uh, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just telling you my ideas. But somebody wants to build their own system because they can save a couple bucks. And it looks like it looks like a robot out of a 1980s movie. Like it's just the worst looking thing. They show up to people's houses. The flow is garbage. The membranes aren't lasting. Everything's bad. And then they go and then they have to buy a system. I just had this with a guy. If you're watching... I'm not poking fun at you. I'm just saying this is very, very common. Um, but he's like, hey, I built my own system. Uh, it's, I'm to the point I just don't even want to deal with it anymore. I got to buy another system. So it's like all that money you spent to not get the system and then you end up buying the system. A big thing is, is that when you buy good equipment, like we'll say the zero again, just because I really like that system. I've had zeros that it's in the, it's been in the field for like seven years. All you do is change filters. Like at that point... Seven years, like it'll run forever if I wanted to. That's worth an investment. You change a few things as opposed to rebuying everything. And I've had seven years of a better system or a better piece of equipment than I would have if I didn't. So cry, buy once, cry once. That's the thing. And it, the other part with equipment is you're only going to be sad that you bought it once. And that's when you pull out the card and you're like, here's the card number. After that, you get it and you use it. You're like, this is amazing. I'm so happy I got this. No one ever regrets buying great equipment. Like, oh, I really should have just bought junky equipment. No one. So anyway, that's the first one. If I could redo it, I'd, I'd have the best equipment that I could. And I wouldn't overbuy. There's a lot of dumb stuff out there. But I would buy what I needed, but in the top tier. Uh, another thing I would do if I was to start from scratch, and tell me if you guys agree with these, but I'd advertise everywhere. Everywhere. That was one thing that I did poorly in the beginning was I'd pick one thing and I'd be like, oh, I'll do that. Well, all of a sudden it's like I'm doing a trade-off for menu uh, ads on a menu placemat. Well, I got it for free, so still a great deal. But that's what I did. And then when I was thinking about advertising, oh, I don't really need to spend advertising. I got that going. Well, that only happens to be if everybody that went to that particular restaurant looked at that particular menu and it wasn't covered in ketchup. And not everybody went to that restaurant. Not everybody even paid attention. You've probably maybe never even seen placemats that have logos or, or, or little business cards on them. And that's because you may not be looking at that. So it's like, well, if I didn't advertise everywhere, I was missing so many people. If I could in the very beginning, I would spend a ton of money making sure that I had an ad that was all over. I would be on Google AdWords, Facebook most importantly, I would be on Home Advisor. I know you guys hate that. Um, I would be like, I would be everywhere with the exact same ad. Door hangers. I would have uh, flyers. I would have EDDM. I would have all of it all look the same, and I would be everywhere. Instead of putting my hard-earned money in one place and going, mm, I would be everywhere. And the reason is, is that somebody who's reading EDDM may not be on Facebook. Or they may not see your ad on Facebook, but they see the EDDM. Or somebody is not going to see the EDDM because they're just going to throw it away, but they're really on Facebook a lot. They'll catch, you can catch people all over. The more you advertise in the more places, the more people will see it. It's like saying there's a limited number, a finite number of fish you can catch in a pond if you only fish that one pond. But if you fish that pond, then the next pond, then the next pond. And every time you go fishing, you're in all these ponds. Theoretically, you could catch every fish in every single pond. It's not going to happen, but that's advertising. I would definitely be everywhere or at least more places. Don't limit yourself because limiting yourself, I'm telling you, you're missing out. Now, this is another weird concept that you're going to kind of hear me say a lot. But if you start something yesterday, it's better than, than today. If I started advertising three years before, I would have all of those people for those three years that I was out there contacting... I would have those all as repeat customers 
And I would touch more people because more people are seeing it. The first time they see an ad, they don't call. Second time, third time, fourth time, all of a sudden, fifth time, they're like, oh, I need this. Being everywhere helps you cover that. And it gets you to be more a recognized brand, gets more customers. If I could have 100 customers year one, I would rather have that than 100 customers year three. Because I have three total years of contacting those customers. My upsells, my my, uh, spring, fall, getting them to do quarterly, adding gunners, doing all that. I make so much more money if I could have those people in year one, right? That's an obvious concept. So doing that out of the gate is much better. If you're not advertising everywhere, no matter where you are in business, that has to be a focus. Because if it is a focus, like I said, two years from now, you'll be like, man, I'm so glad I advertised so heavy back in 2021. Right? Another thing I would do wholeheartedly, and I would be probably one of my main focuses, is reviews. I would push reviews. Now, I always say nice job. I don't have any affiliation with them or connection or I never even really use them personally. We've used them for WCR. They kind of came out of the scene after I was more out of my business, but I would use them a hundred percent. Getting reviews creates credibility before you even need to have credibility. If you're a company that just started in January, you got three months, but every single person you've done since then has written a review. All of a sudden, you got 30 reviews even, 50 reviews. Somebody looking online where your competition, they may have been in business for 10 years, but they only got 12 reviews. You got 30 reviews. It doesn't matter how long you've been in business. The reviews speak volumes. Reviews speak more than actual time in business, actual experience, because it's social credibility. I would push reviews harder than I ever did, and I know that would help me so much. How many times? I mean, you don't know because they'll never call you, but people look, look at all this thing, they go, this guy's got two reviews. Go to the next one. It's like Amazon products. I don't buy anything on Amazon if I go in and there's no reviews. Or if I go in and there's like three stars, I'll never buy that product ever. Because I'm going to look and be like, well, obviously, everybody can't be wrong. Social... um, I want to say like a credibility, you know, justification. You follow masses no matter if you think you do or not. And pushing reviews is huge. Reviews are huge. Ask Bobby Walker. He has a ton of reviews. And uh, man, when you go in, he's got like 500 reviews in his company. He's been in business for like three years. If you go on and all these other ones are 12, 15, 22, 538 reviews, five star, who are you hiring? It doesn't matter what the other guys do. It doesn't matter. Well, of course I'm going to pay a little bit more. I got the best company out there. Get reviews, push reviews, start that yesterday. Don't start that next year. Get reviews. Reviews are amazing. Another thing I would change, and again, if you're on, make sure to let me know your thoughts, but I would uh, uh, upsell all I can. I would upsell. The thing is, is that when I was new in business, I always was like, oh my gosh, they just paid me a hundred bucks. I can't believe it. it." What I didn't realize was that they paid me a hundred dollars because they were happy to get what they got. And if I had other things they were happy to get, they would pay for those too. And if I didn't tell them I did gutter cleaning, they're going to hire somebody to do gutter cleaning, right? If they're already hiring somebody to do services or they're getting to the point where they're going to hire somebody and it's not me, they're still going to hire somebody else. Like, understand that. Somebody has their hand out, and in their hand is $1,000. All the services they're going to do for that year is in that $1,000. That's from, you know, lawn care and gutter cleaning, window cleaning, house washing, painting. It's all right there, okay? They hold that out and go, well, I have all these needs. and I have this money I got to spend. Do you do lawn care? No, I don't. They go to the next one. Do you do lawn care? I do. Here's your part of the money. They have all that there, and they're going to get those services done. If it all went to you, now don't be a jack of all trades, but remember our core, window cleaning, pressure washing, roof cleaning, gutter cleaning, screen repair, core. Any of those services that they need, I want to make sure they know I do those so that I can get the money. Because here's the other thing, they trust you. They start using you, they throw you all the work. They're like, I like this guy. He does great work. I know he's going to do great work on my screen repair because he does great work on my window cleaning. 
Upsells are huge. I didn't start really upselling until like year two, three, something like that. And the big thing was, is I just kind of felt weird. Ugh, I don't want to like be annoying. I don't want to like, you know, uh, if they want it, they'll tell me. No, it is your job and my job to let people know the services we do, let them know why they should choose us for those services and have them use us for those services. I know I'm the best company around. You know you're the best company around. It's an easy sell. You know it's worth it. So why not have them use your services, right? Upsells are big because here's the other thing too is we compound what we do. If I upsold all of my services I upsold, that raises your ticket. That means my year one would have been double or triple what it was. And then that double and triple is what I work on for the next year. Now all of a sudden my growth, I got these guys who already know I do gutter cleaning. Maybe I'd have three years of gutter cleaning on top of three years of window cleaning on that same person. You're talking about exponential growth on this stuff. Doing it a year ago is better than doing it today. And today is better than doing a year from now. It's the same thing. Getting the upsells is so stinking important. Um, I know a lot of you aren't doing upsells as much as you should, but here, think of this. Think of your core. Now, by the way, I know I'm a slight hypocrite because I before des- before I decided I was sticking to my core, I did fleet cleaning. I did wash trucks. Uh, it was part of the pressure washing thing. All of a sudden, I'm like, man, this is just too far from my core. Like greasers, uh, people who clean hoods. I couldn't do that and do window. Like it just wasn't like my core. So I found my core and I focused on my core. My core, I want to advertise and get all of the people that I do work for to know all of my core. Right? I really do. And the other thing is, is I've said this a few times, but I did, uh, uh, I put out, I had 10 services. Now it wasn't 10 separate services, but like one was like outside window cleaning. One was inside and outside window cleaning. Right? And I, I said, check off I did the, we did the survey for maybe six eight months everybody got this and I check check off all the services you know that USI um, does is my company name um, with that I got three as the average out of all of them some people knew a lot some people were probably lying but I averaged out of 10 services and I advertised and pushed them and and let each customer know and there was inserts and three. That means they were not even paying attention to the stuff I was advertising that I did. So when you think, oh man, I couldn't do any more. Yes, you can always do more. You can always do more to let people know what you do. By the way, if you ever want some interesting facts, if your numbers put out a survey, say, hey, what services do you know that I do? Put a bunch of them with a check mark. Just ask for it. If they don't fill it out, who cares? If they do, awesome. Take it and find your average. There's some things too that like, uh, snow removal. We did snow removal because we had the trucks in winter in Wisconsin. There's no window cleaning. Uh, and I was like, well, I got the trucks and I got the, the staff and I got the customers. Why not? And that was one that barely anybody knew that we did. And I realized afterwards, it's like, I would do one mailer and like an email, but that's it. I wouldn't push it because it was too close to snow. So it's like, well, now I need to start advertising way sooner. I need to push it way sooner. I need to call them and physically talk to them and let them know. You got to up it. Really, really good information, by the way. Uh, and uh, the 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 biggest of all of these, probably next to the equipment in my brain, is make sure that you work as hard to keep someone happy as you do to get someone new. That's a really long way to saying um, make sure your existing customers are treated as well as your new ones. Now, everybody's out there thinking about advertising. Oh, man, my advertising this budget is 10 grand a month. Cool. Are you spending $10,000 a month to keep the other people happy that you already do? Nah, it's all about getting more people, man. I got to grow. Okay. So, how do you grow if you have a 50% return rate? If only 50% of the people go, you got to grow a lot on top of that. But what if 98, 99% of people went regular with you? Because you focused on them. That would be huge. Think about that in general. Think of everybody you've ever done. Every customer. From the start to the beginning to now. Every customer. What if 99% of them were your customer every six months? 
What if 99% of them was a customer every three months? I mean, I know that that's not possible in 99%, especially at three months. But I had customers go once a month, regular, for years. I've had customers go every six months. I've had customers that used to do it every two months, and we talked them into doing it every six months. Or uh, every two years, talked them into six months. Like, you can increase those people and have a return. They already trust you. They already know you. They already know your pricing or bouts. They like you. It's so much easier. It costs you next to zero dollars to keep somebody happy, and it costs you a lot of money to get new people. But the problem is, especially when you're new, you're, man, I got to get more people. I got to get more customers. I want more money. I got to get more customers. No. What you need to do is keep the customers you already had, right? You're then building on the other one. So last year, you made $100,000, we'll say. This year, you're like, man, I hope we hit $150,000. How easy is that to do if $100,000 from the year before comes again? But instead of that $100,000, you only get 50. Now to make 150, you need to come up with 100,000 in new customers. The big thing I didn't realize is that people want to be reminded. They want you to take it. Call them. Hey, we're putting together our spring schedule. I just wanted to call and see if uh, there was anything we could do for you and get you on the schedule. People go, oh man, yeah, thank you for reminding me. Yeah, let's do it. People want that. They want to be able to trust you like that. I didn't know that in the beginning. So I didn't push, repeat, I didn't talk to those people, I didn't send out flyers and emails, I didn't have an email blast, I didn't do postcards and all that stuff. As soon as I started doing that, my return rate went up. Now think, 5-10 years later, if every single person that my company's done in 10 years was at 99% coming back, holy cow. Those are the companies. When you see these big, big numbers, you are not doing a million dollars a year and not having a huge return rate. You can't sustain finding new people at that rate. You just can't. So if you want growth or you want to be healthy, make sure to spend as much on them as you do on new. Now, with that being said, $1,000 in new stuff is just a batch of postcards. $1,000 in existing, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money to send to somebody who you're not blanketing to get a higher return. Your return on the investment is going to be way higher. I mean, a 4 by 6 postcard ends up costing you like 50 cents. I'd send those to everybody a couple times a year, actually every uh, month in busy season. I would do phone calls, which cost you nothing. Emails, which cost you nothing. I would send little gifts and leave things for people. And I would put window clings on there so that people are always reminded. All of those things. I would put together to make that all make sense. And again, if I could, I would go back and do that because it just makes a ton of sense. But if you're watching now and you're on YouTube or you're not, go down and let me know in hindsight what you would do differently because it's interesting. I would really like to know. But again, just to go over it, it's uh, get good, uh, good equipment. Don't buy it twice. Just get good equipment right away. Advertise everywhere. Push reviews. Reviews are huge. Uh, Get referrals, which comes into that. Uh, Actually actively ask for referrals, right? You have to tell somebody, hey, do you have anybody else that would love to give them a business card? Give them a, 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 a gift card, right? I would upsell everything I can to every customer every time. And I would more than ever make sure that I was working hard to keep somebody happy. Now, if you need any supplies, you know that I'm your guy, right? 862-312-2026. You should have that number memorized. Uh, But with WCR, we always try to, uh, we'll randomly put stuff in in, um, boxes. We will send some people some cool kids stickers. We, um, you know, do giveaways and contests and we give away just a lot of stuff. And you know what it is, is to build the experience and make sure that somebody has such an awesome experience. There's people out there wearing WCR shirts. There's people out there that post the pictures of their box when it comes in. All of that comes down to building that rapport, keeping people happy. So not that we're doing it perfectly because there's always room for improvement, but something to think about. But anyway, if you're still watching, you know my number, 862-312-2026. Please do let me put in your order. Really, I want to have the most absolutely epic spring ever 
Make that happen for me. Big or small, it literally, I'm telling you, this is what I do all day. So if you have a $50 order, just enough for free shipping, put it in your cart even. Text me, be like, yo, Jersey, my cart is good. And I'll say, oh, are you at this address? Is this card good? And you'll say, yeah, and I'll put it in. It costs you nothing extra. Zero dollars more than it would if you did it yourself, but now you have a guy, and it makes me smile. And it's like a virtual high five of awesomeness. And I can keep buying these fancy haircuts. Running out of stuff, but if you want to tell me what I can buy with your commission money, let me know. 862-312-2026 is my number, and of course, shameless plug again for the American Window Cleaner Magazine. Get the new stickers, because they're awesome. Why not? I really like the squeegee like Adidas one, too. Anyway, uh, do that. It's awcmag.com. And until next week, go out there and build a better business and be epic.